Hi everybody, welcome to the third video in the Introduction to Calculus section of the Calculus Guide video series. In this video we're going to talk about limits and how they relate to the derivative. Uh, as an introduction to limits, we can think of the limit of a function f of x as the value that the function approaches, as x approaches a value x0. We can write this as follows, and we read this equation as the function f of x approaches the limit L as x approaches x0. So in a bit more detail, we let the function f of x be defined on an interval around x0. If the function f of x gets arbitrarily close to a value L, for all values of x sufficiently close to x0, we say that the function f of x approaches the limit L as x approaches x0. And the function f of x doesn't need to be defined at x0 itself in order to have a limit as x approaches x0. A little bit about calculating limits. The limits of many functions can be found by substitution. The value that x approaches is substituted into the function. As an example, for a function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, we, what we would like to do is to evaluate the limit of that function as x approaches 3. In order to do that, what we do is we substitute the value of x is equal to 3 into the function's expression y f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And we get 2 multiplied by 3 plus 1, which is equal to 7. So we've seen that as x approaches 3, the value of our function approaches the value 7. Our function has limit 7 as x approaches 3. The limits of polynomial functions can be found by substitution, with polynomial functions being of the form f of x is equal to x plus 3, f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1, and uh, functions with x raised to other powers. Limits of rational functions can be found by substitution if the limit of the denominator is not zero. Uh, for example, uh, for the function with expression x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 1 all over x squared plus 3, evaluating that function as x approaches 1, uh, we can substitute in x is equal to 1, and our denominator is not 0. So we can solve this by substitution. When we do substitute in x is equal to 1, we get 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 squared minus 1, all over 1 squared plus 3, which evaluates to 1 quarter. Uh, here's an example where, unfortunately, our denominator does evaluate to 0, and we see what we have to do in order to solve that. Here we let the function f of x equal x squared plus x minus 2 all over x minus 1. And we want to know what value does the function approach as x approaches 1. So the function is undefined that x is equal to 1 because the denominator x minus 1 would equal 0 and we cannot divide by 0. So what we do is we have to simplify the formula. x squared plus x minus 2 all over x minus 1 can be simplified uh, by factoring the numerator, that expression at the top. And we can rewrite our function as x minus 1 multiplied into x plus 2 all over x minus 1. The x minus 1 terms cancel, leaving us with the function f of x is equal to x plus 2. So at this point, we no longer have a denominator that's going to evaluate to 0 if we try and solve by substitution. So now we can solve by substitution. Evaluating the limit of this function as x approaches 1, uh, instead of x plus 2, we get 1 plus 2. So our limit of our function as x approaches 1 is equal to 3. 
So as a bit more information, the function is not defined at x is equal to 1, but we can make x close to 1. As x approaches 1, the value of f of x gets closer and closer to 3. For a value of x is equal to 0 0.9, the value of our function is 2.9. For x is equal to 1.1, f of x is equal to 3.1. If we make x closer to 1 even more, x is equal to 0 0.99, f of x is equal to 2.99. x is equal to 1.01, .01, f of x is equal to 3.01. So as our value of x is getting closer to 1, our value of f of x is getting even closer to 3. For x is equal to 0 0.99999, f of x is equal to 2.99999. So f of x approaches the limit 3 as x approaches 1. So limits can fail to exist. A function has no limit at a jump discontinuity, a function has no limit at an infinite discontinuity, and a function has no limit at an oscillating discontinuity. And we're going to see a little bit more about these things now. So a function has no limit at a jump discontinuity. Here in this example, we have a step function. For values of x less than 0, the value of our function is equal to 0. For values of our for values of x greater than 0, the value of our function is equal to 1. And for value of x equal to 0, the value of our function is equal to 0 0.5. So a jump discontinuity is present here at x is equal to 0. At x is equal to 0, the value of the function jumps. So if we were to try and evaluate the limit of the function as x approaches 0, our function isn't actually converging on any one number. Because for values of x greater than 0, the function is equal to 1. And for values of x less than 0, the value of the function is equal to 0. It's not getting closer and closer and closer to any one value. So the function doesn't actually have a limit at, as x approaches 0. Here's an example of an infinite discontinuity. Here we've got a plot of the function y is equal to 1 over x. Now, what we'd like to do is to evaluate the limit of that function as x approaches 0. But as we can see from the graph, as the value of x gets closer and closer to 0 from the positive side, the value of the function, the y value, just gets bigger and bigger and larger and larger and larger. So as our x value gets closer and closer to 0, we're not converging on any one real number. The value of our function is actually just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So our function has no limit at x is equal to 0 due to an infinite discontinuity. Here's an example of an oscillating discontinuity. Uh, in the chart, we've got a plot of the function y is equal to sine 1 over x. And we can see that as our x value gets closer and closer to 0 from the positive side, the value of our function uh, oscillates at a greater and greater frequency between the value of 1 and minus 1. So if we wanted to evaluate the limit of that function as x approaches 0, what we really want to see is for the value of our function to converge on one single real number. But as our value of x gets closer and closer to 0, our y value, instead of converging on one number, it's actually fluctuating at a greater and a greater degree between 1 and minus 1. So we're not converging on any one real number. So this function does not have a limit as x approaches 0 due to an oscillating discontinuity. So what we'd like to do now is tie what we've just discussed about limits back into what we were learning about rates of change. In our earlier discussion on rates of change, the average rate of change over an interval h was given by f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, which rewritten in terms of 
x1 and h can be described as f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 divided by h. And we found that as that interval h gets smaller and smaller, the average rate of change approaches the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the point x1, f of x1. So as the interval h gets smaller and smaller, the average rate of change approaches the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the point x1, f of x1. And that's what we can see here in this example with these two charts. Uh, as you can see, as that interval between the two points gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the average rate of change uh, calculated between those two points uh, it gets closer and closer and closer to the rate of change of the function at that particular point, x1, y1, which could be also described as x1, f of x1. So, in other words, the instantaneous rate of change of the function f of x at the point x1, f of x1 is the limit of the formula for average rate of change as the interval h approaches zero. So our instantaneous rate of change, looking at this equation, is the limit of f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 all divided by h as h approaches zero. So what we're actually looking at here is this expression, f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 divided by h, and we're evaluating that as h approaches zero. So what we actually have is a limit. And based on our discussion here in this video, uh, we're able to calculate this limit. If this limit exists, the limit is called the derivative of f of x at that point. So to summarize what we've been talking here in this video about, we can think of the limit of a function f of x as x approaches some value x0 as the value that the function approaches as x approaches some value x0. And we can write this as follows. f of x approaches the limit L as x approaches x0. The instantaneous rate of change of the function f of x at the point x1, f of x1 is the limit of the formula for average rate of change as the interval h approaches zero. And we can express this with this equation here. The instantaneous rate of change is equal to the limit of the expression f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 divided by h as h approaches zero. And if this limit exists, the limit is called the derivative of f of x at that point. This was our discussion of limits as they relate to the derivative, and we're going to expand on this and develop this further. Uh, thank you very much for your time.